Thank you for listening. I am Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss 21, with Chicago's number one underground comedian, Apollo Taj Mahal. We appreciate it, guys. If you like the interview, and I know you will, be sure to go ahead and listen to the full episode. You can find it on our website, didyousseethatshit.com, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, pretty much wherever you find your favorite podcast. Be sure to listen to the whole episode. We appreciate it very much, guys. I want to introduce uh, Jordan Young. He's a middleweight Bellator fighter. He is 8-0. and He is undefeated. He's only 23 years old. And listen, man, he's a real problem for anybody at 185 pounds in Bellator's roster right now. Jordan, what's going on, brother? Hey, what's up? How you doing? We, we can bump that up. I'm actually going up to 205 now. You owe okay. me five bucks. So I was. That was <laughs> going to be one of the first things we asked you because I know, I know that you were kind of flirting with that idea late last year. So you are going officially to 205. Yeah, I did a new contract. Uh, that's where I'm at. I'm going to go up 205 pounds to this next fight. And it'll be my first one there. So I'm excited to get through that camp and see how I feel in that fight. And then we'll go from there. But yeah, that's the new division. I'm excited about it. I'm stoked, man. Uh, now, I saw you on, on social media about your next fight. Can you say who you're fighting? No, I don't have a name yet. I just, you know, I'm talking about management. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be fighting in uh, late March or mid-April. I'm confident in that. Okay. For the listeners, they may get sick of me here. I'm beating a dead horse. But, you know, Jordan, we're in Chicago, and Bellator has a huge Chicago card at the end of April. Would that interest you? Yeah, you know, that's in the Midwest. Um, you know, from Iowa, I live in South Florida. I grew up in Iowa, so I think that that would make it easy for fans in the Midwest to see me. So that would make sense. You know, there's also a card that's been in St. Louis, and um, my my boy Justin Lawrence. Yes, Justin okay, Lawrence, my boy, and I would I would love to be on a card with him. So that interests me as well. I'm intrigued by the move to 205. You know, uh, what What was ultimately the final thing that kind of pushed you over the edge to say, you know what, fuck it, I'm all in, I'm going 205? Yeah, you know, I, I had a nice time at 185 pounds, and I think that if I was still there, I would contend for a championship belt this year, I think. But I'm only 23, you know, I just turned 23 at the end of last year. And uh, making that 185 pounds is is more than just being dedicated. That's hard for my size, you know? You're 6'4", right? It was sucking the fun out of it. Yeah, 6'4", six, six, and uh, and growing every day. <laughs> well, uh, we were actually talking about this earlier, and uh, and I had read that you were possibly going to 205, and, you know, you've done some catch weight fights at 195. Now, can you tell us how really difficult that weight cut down to 185 was like for you? Yeah, so it started out 185 pounds was tough. And then I started getting some uh, catch weights. 195 pounds was nice. I made that on short notice, actually, the first time I fought that at that weight. Um, I made it on two weeks' notice. And then I actually had a camp for the next uh, the next time I fought at it. And that was a tough cut. And, you know, luckily I was able to get a hold of the guy before. And um, we just bumped it up to 200. And then I kind of was just like, why not just go with the flow and get – go to 205 pounds and build myself up instead of breaking myself down it it was terrible like trying to be stressed every day managing weight and whatnot you you know uh i really noticed at 195 you looked really really solid uh versus when you were cutting weight you got that nice submission win when you uh took that short nose fight Do, do you think that that weight cut uh really messed with your performances i wouldn't say mess with it because i i made I fought at 185 pounds and had really good performances. And I also, earlier in my career, fought at 170 pounds. And I was low body fat at both of those weights, obviously. And I had good performances. I just think that during the camp, more so, I would be affected. Once you make the weight and you rehydrate, you feel really good. But getting down to it, the whole camp, it's like, are you trying to focus on the... I mean, it's easier when you're in the lower ranks and you're... And you're fighting guys who aren't as skilled, and you can focus on the cut during camp. But as you're fighting more skilled guys, you got to focus on them. You can't be worried about a weight cut for seven, eight weeks. 
Yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, I think you made the right decision, brother. I really do. I mean, look at like what with uh, Rafael dos Anjos. Look what he's been able to do. You know, he he left one fifty five moves to one seventy, and the, he's a fucking world beater now. You know, I think that that going to two hundred five for you, Jordan. I think now that you don't have to deal with that bullshit on a daily basis, like you said, I think you're really going to be able to take that next step, man. Yeah, I feel good. I'm excited about it, and it's a whole new set of opponents. You know, being fixated on 185 pounds and thinking about these different fights. And then you go up 205 pounds, and not only are the body characteristics different of these guys, like they explode different. The energy, the energy level is different. So it's a whole new set of things for me to work on in camp, and I'm excited about that. Obviously, uh, you did say that you were training out of South Florida, if I heard you correctly. Can you tell us a little bit about mm-hmm. that? Yeah, you know, I train at American Top Team. I've been here for, it's getting close to two years pretty soon. But uh, I've been here, I love it here. And um, I feel like I have deep roots now. Like I'm invested with the coaches and training partners and we've been putting in work for a little bit now. We have some momentum with three fights in a row last year. So I'm excited for what we can do this year. And uh, could you kind of, you know, tell us on how you're going to be taking that next step up and wait, uh, who will you be training with to kind of help you prepare for that heavier frames that you're going to have to face? There's a ton of guys down there at ATT, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some different guys. I have some different ideas, too. I met Glover Teixeira when I fought twice in Connecticut for Bow Toy last year. And um, I've never trained with him, but he trains... I know he's at like an American top team affiliate he, he has in uh, Connecticut. I'd like to get out there and train with him for a week or two. He's a great light heavyweight. I think that that would be good training for me to test where I'm at here in about a month or so because I'm still growing into this 205-pound frame. Yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, I'm excited for you, man, because I think that you are uh, you know, you're in a good place professionally, personally. I'm really intrigued to see who uh, you know who Bellator is going to throw at you next. Apollo and I were talking a little bit before this. we uh, got a hold of you here today. You know, I was just telling Apollo how I'm impressed with your jujitsu, and your, your jujitsu is really like it's next level. The way that you're handling guys, your your frame really is advantageous to to your game there, and your striking is actually coming along too. Do you feel that your jujitsu is a little bit ahead of your striking, or do you feel like your striking is kind of caught up now? No, I mean, I grew up in the Gi, so, like, <laughs> I definitely feel that Jiu-Jitsu was stronger when I was younger. I think that I also focused heavy on striking because every fight stands on the feet, and then if you're if we're talking about any altercation outside of cage fighting, it's going to be stand-up most times. You know, you're not going to be grappling on cement. So I've always put a heavy emphasis on my striking, and I think now that I've went up a weight class, my power will be more evident but as far as skill wise i think when it comes it's a nice blend i have i have very good striking and and with the range and distance that i keep people will tend to want to get in close to me and then that blends right into my jiu-jitsu so they work well together but if you separate them i think that they're at equal levels you know, I, I, I definitely really like uh, how you strike because you look really comfortable on your feet when you're striking with people. And you uh, you kind of have that very awkward style where you use your range very well. You come in. Could you tell us, you know, who you're working with with your striking and what what heavy emphasis are you on? Are you boxing or kickboxing, you know? Yeah, for sure. So uh, it's always changing, like, as far as who you're working with. I've worked with different coaches in the past, but right now I have a very good blend with um, Di Davis doing my boxing training, and then I have Coach Roger Crow doing my, my kicks. It's it's very, like, it's not Thai and it's not Dutch kickboxing. It's like, you know, we're doing a lot of oblique kicks and calf kicks, unorthodox kicks that are, are working very well for my my style. And then also um, Dr. Polly Gloves, he, he writes some um, some articles, actually, with, like, I think Bleacher Report or maybe Bloody Elbow or something. But he is a boxing coach. He worked with Brad Pickett. But with me, we get a lot of good distance work in. It's, it's boxing, but uh, it's a little different. He incorporates some good things, and we're getting good work in, like, once a week. Awesome. Sounds like you definitely you definitely have a, a vast amount of very good coaches to choose from down there as well as training partners. Uh, Jordan, how do you spend your free time, man? Are you a video gamer? 
Yeah, yeah, I get on the video games. I've been hitting up. Uh, somebody just introduced me to um, Fortnite. I'm loving that. I'm playing that. Um, I'm like a level 25. I got there quick in like quick three weeks. <laughs> My girlfriend was was uh, getting frustrated with that. But that new UFC game just came out. I'm looking to get on that in the next couple of days. I always love playing those. Oh, man, definitely. Uh, if you want to play that and if you got a PS4, man, you can get them hands for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm on Xbox One. Anybody that's listening, add me. It's uh, J A Y one and then it's 80, but it's spelled out E-I-G-H-T-Y, and then five. Oh, man, you're going to definitely have to make me uh, get get my brother over with the Xbox One so I can play you in that. <laughs> Be interesting. <laughs> I don't think you want it, bro. Oh, <laughs> interesting to play a real fighter, man. Because you, you're, you know, you probably uh, are you able to translate like your your real knowledge of the fight game to the game at all? I mean, I just like I come with different strategies. Like I like applying pressure on that game, and then when people feel pressed, they want to fire back. So when they go to fire back, I'll I'll I'll, I'll back up and you know let that you that stamina regain while they they waste theirs and then get right back on them. I train people and finish them quick in that game. That's awesome. I, I don't think it's fair that a dude that could beat me up in real life could beat me up in a video game too. Like, <laughs> 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 well, uh, Jordan, man, is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, you know, I'd like to uh, shout out my Gen American top team, all my coaches, uh, Coach Mike Brown, Coach Dean Thomas, um, Coach Roger Crowd, Coach Daya Davis, Coach Dr. Polly Gloves. I'd also like to shout out um, all Bellator, all my fans, um, my girlfriend, Lupita, and um, we just got a great day in Harvey Dent. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you can follow him to support, support him. He, he's uh he's only five months old but he's already like 70 some pounds huge wow dang very cool well man i appreciate it could, could you do us a favor we have a little tradition we do here with with our guests could you say this is jordan young and you're listening to the did you see that shit mma podcast all uh, right for sure this is jordan young and you're listening to did you see that shit podcast i appreciate it brother thank you man yeah later i appreciate it <laughs>